Price safety. Is that a weird subject for us to talk about right here on the streets of New York City, which is likely one of the least safe places to ride any sort of personal electric vehicle? And that is no exaggeration since the local law heavily favors the driver and rarely press any charges even in the event of fatal accidents involving either cyclists or pedestrians. As a matter of fact, I have even heard the streets of New York City being described as the perfect place to commit murder since as long as your weapon of choice come with a four wheel drive, it's very likely that you'll be able to get off scot-free. Perhaps that's why the traffic pattern here resembles something out of a Mad Max movie on a regular basis. But these streets are also where I have skated, biked, and spent a large chunk of my life this week, a tell of survival. <laughs> Let's try 10 tips that will help keep you safe on your urban commute. I promise not to get all preachy preachy on you. Roll the intro! As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. When it comes to ride safety, lots of discussion starts and ends with gears. Perfectly reasonable if you are primarily riding in a suburb where roads are empty and the speed low. But if you're anything like me, with an aspiration for open air commute in an urban setting like this, to save a little bit of time or just have a bit more fun on the way to work, then the situation is a little bit different. Since as much as a full face helmet is going to help you doing a solo crash, when it comes to any sort of accident involving another car, then it's a whole different scenario. Instead of gear, I'm gonna start with another piece of safety equipment that I think is even more important than gear, and that is this. And I don't mean the helmet, I mean your brain. First, a drastic oversimplified, but I think true statement. Accident only happen when you encounter an unexpected condition and is unable to react appropriately to it. <laughs> the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> when we drive, we build a predictive model in our brain of what we think the traffic will do to help guide our actions. Like watch out for that speeding Mustang about to overtake you from the wrong lane. As long as our projection is somewhat accurate, we react appropriately. However, if there is a misalignment, like let's say, if you were surprised by a patch of gravel you didn't see, or worse, a car pull out suddenly into your path, then yes, all of your protective gears come into play as a last resort and we'll get to that later. And along the line of mental model I was talking about early, I wanted to give you some real life example of how I look at and think about some real life situations. Now I'm not saying that it's the only way things work, however it's what's actually working for me over the past bunch of years while riding the streets of New York. So. Take it as you will. On an empty side street, short of mechanical failure, the only thing that can surprise you is the actual road. Pajos, gravels, and even debris could all cause you to lose your footing, and over the years I have learned to appreciate road surfaces like a fine connoisseur. I typically scan the road with my lower peripheral vision and have a running tally of all the particularly bad spots in lower Manhattan. Condition changes constantly, but I write enough so I can update the list in my brain to help keep them current. Like 3rd Street right here, which for whatever reason had always been a mosaic of bad patches and potholes. I don't even know why they bothered to putting these speed bumps because there's no way you can even drive fast on this road because of the terrible surfaces. This is also the reason why I stopped wearing this particular PLC full face helmet. The chin piece was a little bit too far forward and I feel that it obstructed some of my peripheral views of the road directly in front of me. Yes, I can look down and still see the pavement, but that is a distraction away from the bit that is really important. This is the impossible task that you must attempt every time you ride and it's also the thing that occupies 95% of my attention whenever I'm on the street. If you ride or drive in the city long enough, patterns do emerge and make it more manageable. The second reason why I don't wear my OPOC full face helmet as often are that it also dampens sound transmission. 
Certain angles like that behind you aren't as easy to watch, so I listen. Despite the cacophony of noises in New York City, not only can I hear a car coming, I can often tell how fast it is as well as what kind of car it is. The over-the-shoulder check, which is also harder to perform with a full-face helmet, often act as a confirmation for what I already heard, which is why I'm trying this new helmet instead. The POC Arctic Airspin, smaller chin piece and more open design. More on it later. Everything feeds my mental model and I react and position myself accordingly. To me, I think of it like a game of chess, where every single move should be a strategic reaction to the entire four as well as your opponent rather than just a few other isolated things. Here are a few examples. We're on 1st Avenue and I'm getting a little bit nervous because of the black truck on the right is breaking for no reason. I know there's a garage coming up on my left and I'm slowing down because I'm afraid that he's gonna suddenly cut me off to get to parking. He didn't so I sped past him since drivers who act unsure are usually unpredictable and scare me more. I check my rear view mirrors to track where he is since I see the minivan ahead slowing down for a left. The black truck wasn't far back enough so I stay in my own lane and slow down since having my safe zone pinch make me nervous. 21st Street in Queens, I see the traffic slowing down and I swing to the outside to keep my safe zone clear. Seeing the road narrowing and sidewalk clear, I took to it instead. I see the light turn green and I check to see if the car had turned signal on. I slow down anyway to double check and I wait and merge right behind the black sedan and use it to gauge distance with the following car. With slower traffic, I usually hang back in the rear right corner and watch the front steering tire which tell me what the car is going to do. Metropolitan Avenue, shopping street, so I keep a slower pace and watch for open doors. Black trucks look impatient for the turn and win despite incoming traffic, so I veer right to maintain distance. Then of course, jaywalking guy decide to walk right into traffic, so I have to veer left. I kept to the middle of the row, usually to avoid being doored by someone leaving a parked car without looking, which is pretty common and is also the number one reason for bicycle accident here in New York City. My base assumption are that every Every single thing out there is actively trying to murder me. So my assumption in all instances is always whatever is the worst possibility. If there is a blind spot, I'm gonna assume that there's a truck behind it that's about to pull out and run me right off the road. I very much like to stay on the side of paranoia since that way of thinking has saved my high on multiple occasions. Beyond awareness, there are also a few general habits I like to maintain. Whether you find yourself on the sidewalk, bike path, or in the middle of the road, don't be significantly slower or faster than the average traffic. It's good to keep pace with whatever traffic that you're mixed in. That keep you predictable and easier to track for other people even if they miss you, which happens. Keeping speed means that they will react appropriately based on the bikes or vehicle around you. This is after all the strength of you see since we can crawl along at 5 miles per hour or push 45 if we want. Following the flow is a good idea but you should also never pen yourself in because Cars and motorcycles have much better braking distance than we do, so you should never tailgate a car. It sounds like a crazy thing that I even need to state that. However, especially with some of the newer, faster wheels, you're actually capable of doing that, but it is a very bad idea. If the car stops suddenly, then you're about to have a close encounter with his rear windshield. Always hang to the right or left of the lane so you have room to overshoot the vehicle in front of you, which also allow you a much further view of the surfaces and minimize chance for a surprise prize potholes, but there are going to be time when you just don't have the safe distance for braking which lead to you need room to perform emergency stop. However, it is no good if that room also bisects the path of an incoming car. This is why it's critical to practice turning while you're performing an emergency stop, buying yourself valuable distance as well as time for both you and the driver to react to whatever situation you found yourself in. One, as much as you can since you can just about forget every single thing I said and learn just this one thing and it'll save you one day. As a matter of fact, practice emergency braking period. Just about every single situation can be resolved by slowing down to a stop. The better you know how to do that quickly, the safer you are. Before moving on to gears, I got one last suggestion. This is Jenga, which is the basic stance of the Brazilian martial art, capoeira. Notice that I never drop my arm because this acts as a crash bar to help protect my face. An earlier comment asked what they should do with their hand while riding. Well, keep them up. At the speed we're going, crash happen almost instantaneously. 
If your arms are already up when you're about to meet the payment, there's a much better chance your hands rather than your chin will hit first. The Jenga also lowers your center of mass and make you more stable as well as reduce the amount of distance between you and the ground in case if you have to crash. This is why keeping your knee bent and your stance low is such a good idea while you're riding a UC. Finally, gears. Now, I wholeheartedly agree that you should absolutely not skimp out in this particular department. Unless you have thousands of miles of ride experience under your belt and know exactly how to mitigate and avoid falls as well as what particular piece of gear is more effective for you starting out this is definitely something absolutely critical for anyone who is thinking about learning how to ride an electric unicycle since like many other sports when it comes to crashes it's not a matter of if but rather when and having the right protection can mean the difference between getting up and trying again versus hospital time and having to give up riding now you may not see me fully geared up in some shots but keep in mind that i ride differently depending on my setup and i do take precaution accordingly the helmet and the full face one is just about the most important piece of safety gear that you can wear while riding an electric unicycle because of the way we typically crash which is face first as to recommendations they're not one size fit all and the only way to know what works better is to buy and try a few options and return the one that don't since comfort is number one you're not going to wear it if it doesn't fit as to the plc arctic sl spin 30 second review i like it it cups my head really well and it provides almost as good of a support as my full face plc helmet it has great padding and a removable liner which is great for hot days like this so that you can actually take it now and wash it and despite its thinness this this crash bar is solid and although I haven't really put it to test just yet, seems like it should be able to hold up. And of course it has the benefit of a traditional half helmet which is that I don't feel as insulated from my surrounding as I was while wearing the full face PLC helmet. It is also significantly lighter and more comfortable to wear, at least for me. Everyone's head shape is different so you gotta try then to see how you like it. Which is just as important as a helmet since with the proper reaction and stance, hopefully this is what meets the ground first rather than your chin. I like the gyro rider wrist guard I got, but the important bit is the plastic insert which help protect your wrist when you slam it into the ground. Since like what my jujitsu teacher had taught me, the best way to disperse energy in a fall is to slap the ground really hard. That is, we can actually remember how to do that while you're going down. So that's where the rest of the gear comes in. For me, the rest of these gear, including the full face, are all more situation dependent. For instance, you probably wouldn't want to wear this hot moto jacket on your regular deli runs, especially not hot day like this. However, for longer rides, this is actually not a bad option. This is the Dionese City Guard, which because of my tendency to buy on clearances is actually discontinued. However, it's still a great jacket and I think there is a current version of it. It's a summer motorcycle mash jacket and flow air extremely well as long as you are moving. It's comfortable, cut, slim and very well as all other Dionysia jacket tends to be. And the thing I especially like about this jacket is the chest pieces, which not all motorcycle jackets have. And because of the way we typically fall, which is forward on electric unicycle, it's a very good idea to have jacket that have chest pieces. Again, because we tend to fall forward. I bruised my ribs so many times when I first started to learn that this or something like it would have been good by day one. I also recently bought these Liet knee guard, but I'm still a little bit unsure if I'll wear them regularly. They are more comfortable than my prior pair, so I'll stick with them for now and see how they fare over time. Right? More! Electric unicycle is meant to be ridden as if they're an extension of your own body. The less you think about ride mechanic, the more you're able to pay attention to your surrounding as well as keeping yourself safe. I mean, I have about 4,000 miles under my belt. However, I still feel like I am learning each time I ride, which is actually what makes this so much fun. Like skiing or snowboard, it's something that you can continue to push and build experience on, and the longer you do it the better and safer you will be at riding I can't stress this enough 
People are often shocked that I vlog while riding mixed in with traffic, but keep in mind that I've been skating, riding bicycle, and motorcycle in New York City traffic for more than 20 years. And although I still consider it dangerous, it is something I feel I can manage personally, but I don't recommend it, certainly not to anyone who's just starting. On the other hand, if you are contemplating learning how to ride an electric unicycle and are wondering how safe it is, I would say that with the current generation of wheels and a reasonable amount of practice and personal discretion, which is critical, an EUC is just as if not safer than a bicycle, as long as you respect its boundary and resist the siren call for speed. Trust me, I am trying as well. Oh man, look at the time, I somehow managed to waste another 10 minutes of your life. But I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and check out the links to my Patreon page if you like to support my work. And as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheels is to grow as a community. So tell your friends and teach them how to ride and get them hooked. Until the next episode, thank you. Bet your bottom dollar, you were best under pressure.